Hi, my name's Jack Audience. Welcome back to my channel. We've got two PCs to build, and I'll just quickly go over them. We've got an Intel Pentium processor, both exactly the same speed as um, the other one. So we've got two, we've got two of each, basically. We've got um, Vig Vigilance um, DDR3, 8 gigabyte RAM. And we've got um, a Kingston 120 gig SSD drive. Um, we're going to put in there as well but one of them we're going to put one with one of the ssd drive and we're going to stick a box standard hard disk in the other one and um, we basically brought the um msi motherboard um again these are little mini boards and stuff so and again exact same motherboard and both and we're actually going to outfit it with this um atx power supply 500 watt, which is also should be more than enough that needs in this machine anyway. And then we're going to do, run some tests on it. So we're going to do some boot tests, see how fast each one boots. One wants to be fitted with a standard hard drive, the other one will be fitted with an SSD drive. So there's a difference on booting Windows. It's going to be running Windows 10 identical to each other, and we compare some tests with it. So what I'm going to do in this video, I'm going to do a hyperlapse video of me installing this kit into both PC containers. This is the PC box we've chosen. You don't want something too big, you want something as small as possible for these motherboards to go into it. And also a little bit of room for future expansion for a bit later on. So uh, these are very box standard cases, very cheap cases, but again, quite nice for the job and it's not OTT sort of thing. So I'm gonna go ahead and do some time lapses. I'm gonna do individual videos on putting the CPU on the motherboard, fitting the RAM, how it should be done, because some people out there do mastification saying how, which way does the RAM go around. So we we'll do separate videos for those. But purpose for this video, we're gonna put it all together. I'm gonna to do it over time lapse. Um, otherwise this video will be way too long to watch and get boring anyway. So further ado, let's get uh, the motherboard out, fitting the RAM and the CPU, and then we'll get that installed into the uh, case and then we'll fit in the hard drive and ready to go. I haven't got silly ROMs with these because I'm just literally gonna run it off the USB stick. Because we're gonna be coming, if we're gonna be using components um, that are quick, fast, you know, we don't need to see the DVD drive to slow down the installs. You know, nobody uses DVD drives anymore, all SSD and external hard drives, we should, what's what we should be using for data storage now. Forget DVDs, forget cutting stuff to CD-ROM stuff. Who does that these days anyway? So, um, so yes, yeah, so I'm going to use Windows off a USB stick, which I've done on a video before, how to actually create your, your bootable memory stick for Windows. Very straightforward and easy to do, so just check one of my videos out on my channel for that. So, let's get on with the build. Right, we're just going to install, we've got the RAM out, and we've got the CPU here ready to install and fit. So, this is just an Intel um, processor, and you can see it's no pins at the bottom, it's all just sort of leveled off, so nice and easy. And this always has a notch at the top there. I think it is one of these notches here will tell you. Oh, there we go. It's a little arrow in the corner up here, which tells you um, which way it goes on the board. So we fill that very quickly. So we just on the here, we just there's a little pin here. You just push down and push to one side, and it raises up nice and easy like so. And then if you undo that, it should then lift up and revealing the actual CPU um, point. And on the board, if you look very carefully, it will tell you which way it'll go around. It really should only fit one way around. And it's got a little corner piece on the side here, I think it is, that indicates that's where that arrow on the CPU should line up and fit. And it only goes one way around. So if it doesn't go on there, you can always just lift it up. As you can see uh, on there, there's some grooves around the side of the CPU, which um, it all slides into. So it only goes one way around. If you try and fill it the other way around, it actually won't, um, because of the way the grooves on the chips um, only fit one way. So you can't make that mistake. So once that's in place, then you just put the lid back over, pull down on the pin, oh, sorry. Pull down on the pin nice and tightly, and if you get it right, then the top plastic cover should pop off and it's in its place nice and tight like so. So that's um, all fitted correctly. It's, you can't make any mistakes on that. It's quite easy to go in. It's gonna be tight because it's gonna be a very tight fitting because pushing the CPU down on the board to make sure all the pins um, connect to the bottom of the CPU correctly. Now that's now locked into place. 
sorted. So the next one we're going to do is fit the fan. There's no right or wrong way to fit these fans. Uh, again, there's nothing you need to put on the bottom of the fan. There's no glue you need. These come with the CPU as well, so we're fitting a standard Intel fan that's recommended for this process because it comes with, come with the CPU. And it's got these little plastic lugs on here. All you do is line them up with the holes on the motherboard. There's four holes there. There's no wrong way of go, um, connecting it. But what you can do is take the lead out of the fan, like so, because it's obviously tucked in nicely around the fan. Find out where the actual um, pin connector for the fan is. So we've got the system fan pin connector here. So if we just move the CPU around, so it's in line of plugging in, then that way you know the cables will fit perfectly. So now line the holes up, so they just drop inside. So there you go, so they just drop inside, nice and easy like that. And as you can see on the motherboard here, that's where the fan um, cable will go. So nice and easy. And then what you need to do is, on these black little pegs here, um, push down, and they should then click, as you can hear, into place. Oh, just make sure that goes in. And if you turn it over, you should see the holes gone through and they're actually executed, well, you know, open up wide, so it stopped the fan from coming away. And that fan's now nicely, tightly secure on the processor board, on the CPU, on top of the CPU. So check, make sure it's all in and it's all flush to the board. Very check around there. If not, you can just re pull these clips back up and it takes the fan off, so it's nice and easy. So just make sure they're fully pushed down onto there and it's in place and you can just make sure on the board, looking at the bottom of the plastic, see if it's actually fitting flush on the motherboard, which it is. Nice and easy. So this is out, take the cable, and it goes one way around, plug that straight into your CPU um, slot. Sorry, the CPU fan bit. I may have made this a bit too tight. Are they gonna go around? No. Yeah, so I've fit it a bit too tight. So we just take the cable and we just reroute it round so it does fit in nicely. Again, it will only go one way round. And we just drag the cable over. Oh, it's way, like so. There you go. There you go. All nicely tucked away. So that's that's that fitted. Nice and easy. So we've got only got one sticker memory to install in this. So some motherboards might have a, a specific slot to install RAM in here. It might say, you know, occupy um, the, the, uh, RAM slot one or two. If you've got two pieces of RAM to install, it just put into both slots, it only has two slots for it. But um, I'm just gonna check to make sure on, on the board, because it always tell you DIM one, DIM two. So on the motherboard here, it's got DIM one at the top, DIM two at the bottom. So for this purposes, I'm gonna install it in DIM one, okay? So I take the RAM out. RAM's quite tall, because it's got um, this over sort of heat sink on it, <clears throat> so the RAM does get particularly hot on the job. It's gonna keep the, the CPU cool down. So, not CPU, keep the RAM cool down. They take the, the heat away from the RAM. So and it, RAM only goes one way round because you've got this little notch in the middle here. <clears throat> and it only goes one way round on the, um, the DIM um, slot. And if you look in the DIM slot, with well, the DIM sim, well DIM, whatever you wanna call it, there's a little notch in there, so they just line up. And again, you can't get it wrong, you just literally, Take the RAM, get in the right way round, and just it slides in both ends. As you can see, slides in both ends in the slots here. <clears throat> Lines up nicely, and you just give it a push down, it clicks, and the side click has come up at the side there, and the RAM is naturally installed successfully. And if you've got two bits of this, you just do the same with the other one. That is straightforward. So now what we're gonna do is install this into the PC case, <clears throat> and we can start adding all the bits and pieces to what, uh, um, build it up and then we can get to install windows on it. So that's straightforward, success. This is the case we're putting the um, motherboard into it and when you open the case up, I've taken both sides off of this. So he's got loads of cables here which is to do with all the USB ports at the front, sound port and so forth. Um, these all will fit on the motherboard in only one slot so it's quite, quite easy to install. Um, got no power pack but we've got the power supply there anyway which is going to fit that very shortly as well. So we're going to now install the motherboard 
into here. It's just literally lining the motherboard up. Remember, the motherboard comes with its own back cover to, because obviously it's a certain slots on the motherboard, that will go in the back of your case, nice and easy, just along here. So if we install that one next, um, first. Again, it only goes one way round. Make sure the pokey out bits um, stay at the back and that stays at the front. So we line, line it up. <coughs> and what we we'll do is we'll line the motherboard up to find out which way it's going to go in first. Um, so then we know which way the... Um, that's it. So then we know which way around this, this, this slot goes in. So put that into place. It should just slot in a little bit easy, nice and easy. There we go. And now we can actually turn this back up. Move the cable that way with. Depending on the type of board, it depends on like how many screws you need. Because it's quite a short board, you should only need hopefully these four, four there. Um, it's a little bit long, so it might actually have to take up a bit more than that. So just line this up with the grid and the holes. There you go, it goes in nicely there. So there you go, it's going to need one, two, three, four, five, six screws. So that's nice and lined up inside there. So we're just going to screw these screws down to secure it in place. Then we can start adding in the power supply and so forth bits. Right, I've gone ahead and installed the hard drive. So um, when you fit in the motherboard in, you might want to take the memory stick back out because um, you've got to slide the hard drive into it. It's very tight uh, fitting here. So it's pretty interesting to see a bit, bit more inside. Um, Drag it around. So the hard drive is screwed in with four screws. Well, this one's three screws, two at the side here, one at the other side. Um, so this one's going to have the standard hard drive uh, installed in this. Um, so you might want to remove the RAM out so you can slide the hard drive in or put the hard drive in first before installing the motherboard. There's different ways where you can do this. It depends how, comf how comfortable you are. So now we're going to fit the power supply in here. And we're going to plug all these cables in it. These cables only go on my one way round. There's a um, particular, like this big boot cable, it's normally marked up where that needs to go. And uh, various slots on here for it to go into. And there's obviously there's different bits of cable here. They're normally marked up on here to say that's like HD audio. There's another cable here that shows it's um, USB. Um, and you've got various things here to do with like the hard drive lights, the power lights, and power switch. And and the last one on here is the reset switch. So what you'll do is make look at your manual for your motherboard um, to know which one of these cables will go on to which slot on the motherboard here. Straightforward. I think that's the um, yeah that's the USB three. I don't think this motherboard supports the USB three on this motherboard particularly. Otherwise you'll get a, a nice sort of a bluish socket like this. Um, for it to plug into so this doesn't have USB 3 ports or does it so it might be Normally not marked up. It might be lots of little pins at the bottom here for it to go into so I'm gonna get the motherboard Details out find out where this these all slot in and we connect the cables install the power supply And we're almost ready to start install the window. So there we have it. We've got the cables all tied up try and keep the Try and use cable ties as much as you can to keep all this cable nice and tidy and out of the way with you don't want to interfere with the fan so you decide to put another fan here for extra cooling then at least you've got a nice space and the cable's not going to get away with the cooling and stuff and it looks nice when it's all tidied up so i'm going to see if i can get a shorter serial ata cable because this is just a little bit too long i just want it fit in there to there because it's only going to have one hard drive in it anyway it's not going to have multiple hard drives um i might even just cable tie that to the this rest of the cable here keeps everything nice and tidy um, it makes it a nice look, nice build. So we've got the hard drive in, we've got the, the power supply, we've got the RAM, we've got the CPU, we've got the motherboard, all installed. So that's basically a PC built. So all we've got to do now is boot off a memory stick uh, for the Windows and install Windows. And uh, I've, got, I've got to build another one of these in a sec to put the SSD drive in so we've got identical builds. So I'm going to get on with that. I'm going to take some pictures of all these components so they can all go on my website so you can have a closer look at what they are. And we'll put all these up, the products are purchased and bought for this build. So you can have a look. So if you do decide you want to buy and um, build a, a small PC, it's not a very powerful PC. It's a Pentium um, dual core processor, 8 gig of RAM. The motherboard will support 16 gigs. 
and it will also support the i3 and the i7 Intel processor as well. So I've just kept the cost low, so it just gives you a rough idea that we can build a PC very cheaply and on that budget as well. It may not uh, be enough for doing some um, like work, planes and games and stuff like that. You can get a gaming card in here as well if you wanted to boost the graphics a little bit so you can get a bit of gaming, but at least it's a starter machine on a budget. And as, as you get more money in, you can then start building on this. Uh, or, or at least it gets you going on the PC and you can say, right, next time I'm gonna buy a bit more expensive case and I'll slowly buy a motherboard, but at least you have this one to play with and sort of experiment with and get into build your, your, your very first PC. So that's straightforward. So I know you guys out there that are gamers and stuff, this is just basic building. This is buying a PC on a budget that we can afford when we don't have lots of money to throw at it. But this is, this is what these, this channel is all about, budgeting PCs, building something that's ideal for university, studying, students, starting out of machine, first time out, or even just literally sticking some low-end um, video editing software in there. And if you've got a GoPro, you can edit your footage. This is something to get you started with, at least, anyway, on a budget. So there we go. So let's get this put sides on it, and then I'll get the other one built, and then we can then start installing Windows 10, and then start having a look at speed testing. So we'll do that on another video. Um, for you guys. Uh, so I want to do it on this same video because I want to try to get these videos quite short to the point as well. So there you go, there you have it. So all the spec of this is all below in the comments. And if you like what I'm doing, you want to see more of this, please remember to like, hit that subscribe button. And remember, if you've got any comments, questions on this, comment below and see you soon. Cheers.